In this update, I'm going to show you how to build an acrylic plexiglass cover for the inside of our solar generator, so that we can store things like jumper cables inside the case without having to worry about shorting out or damaging any of our connections. I will also show you some of the updates and improvements that I've made since the original videos, including a way to automatically disconnect the solar charger from the battery when the solar panels are unplugged. This will keep the solar charger from slowly running down the batteries while in storage, without having to remember to turn on or off a disconnect switch. I will also show you a better solution I have found for the solar cable wire, including a heavier gauge cable for less cost and a built-in cord wrap. For the plexiglass cover, if you have been following along with this build series, you can download a cut diagram that I have made that should work for you if you've mounted your components in the same positions that I did. If not, you can create your own template using some cardboard. I will do another video to show you how to create cardboard templates, but here's a quick time lapse of the process that I used. Once you have your cut diagram, we can start cutting out the individual panels. The quickest and easiest way is to score the plexiglass using either a plexiglass knife, like this one, or a sharp utility knife. Once you have measured where you need to cut, use a straight edge to guide the knife and score the panel. Score it several times to help you get a nice clean break. Then place the scored line along a sharp corner and evenly flex the panel until it snaps along your score line. Use the same process for all the panels in the cut diagram. The two panels with an inside corner require a couple of extra steps. First, we will need to drill a small hole at the inside corner. This is to keep the panel from breaking further from that point. When drilling plexiglass, you will want to use the drill in reverse and at high speed. The friction of the drill bit actually melts its way through, which will keep you from chipping and cracking the panel. Then to assist the break in starting exactly where we want it to, we will notch the two scored lines about an inch in from each end. You can use a vibrating multi-purpose saw like that I am using here, or instead a fine tooth jigsaw or a Dremel style cutoff wheel. At this point, we will put the longest edge against our corner and gently flex the panel until both of the scored edges break clean. After you have all the panels cut, we will assemble them using some acrylic solvent cement. I will be using a water thin fast solvent number 4 initially and then follow that up later with a thicker number 16 cement to strengthen it in the joints. You can find links to where I purchased both of these in the description and in my linked blog post. I also purchased both of the applicators I used from Amazon as well. I will post those links too. Lay the pieces on cardboard to soak up any excess solvent as you work. The solvent has a set time of about 2 minutes. So once applied, you can make small adjustments, but you will need to work fast. The joint will not reach full strength for 24 hours, so even after it is set, you will still need to be careful at first. Keep assembling the panels, referencing the cut diagram for their placement. You can use the existing panels you have already glued in as alignment guides, so that everything will match together nicely. After you have all the panels together, let it rest for several hours to gain strength. Then use the number 16 solvent, which is much thicker, to lay a bead inside the corners, which will strengthen them and fill any small gaps. Previously, I had recommended using high quality heavy gauge speaker wire for the solar cable, because it came with two wires bundled already together, and it was much less expensive than the Voltic wire, which is not very flexible for coiling longer links. Since then, I've discovered that you can purchase outdoor rated extension cords with 12 gauge wire, for even less than the speaker wire. And not only is it more durable and weather resistant, 
the wire itself is much more flexible and great for coiling longer lengths. You will want to snip both ends off of your cord. And then carefully use a sharp knife to remove the outer insulation. You can also trim off the green ground wire since we will only be needing two conductors. On the solar panel side, we will need to connect the MC connector pigtails that came with our solar panel kit. We will need to make sure the solar panel wire with the negative minus label is connected to our black wire in the extension cord. The white wire in our extension cord will be connected to the solar panel wire that is labeled with the positive plus sign. Then wrap the end of the extension cable with some electric tape for some additional strain relief. I used some heat shrink butt splices here for the wires, but if you did not, you could also wrap them too for additional weatherproofing. On the solar generator end of the extension cord, we will connect our six pin trailer plug just like before. The black ground wire will go to the pin labeled as ground. Our white positive wire will go to the center pin. We will also be adding an additional jumper wire here as well. This is part of the new solution I've talked about for having an automatic disconnect for the solar charge controller. You will want to use at least 14 gauge wire and we will connect it to the pins labeled for the left and the right turn signal. After the jumper wire is in place, we can then assemble the trailer plug and tighten the wire clamp. I found the extension cord also works really nicely with these six pin trailer plugs. It makes for a really rugged connector. I also added an inexpensive cord wrap for coiling up the solar panel cable for storage and when we don't need the full length. After coiling up the cable, I position it where I want it to be mounted on the back of the panel. And then I used some construction adhesive to glue it into place. The last improvement and modification I made was to add the auto disconnect switch for our solar controller. Originally, I didn't feel the solar generator should require one, because the solar charge controllers are designed to be connected to the battery 24-7. So I assumed that the battery draw should be very minimal when there is no sunlight. Much like the clock in your car should not run the battery down when your car is parked for a long time. Bruce Forrester predicted in the comments of an earlier video that this could be an issue. Because of his comment, I decided to measure the current draw from the solar controller when the panels were disconnected. The idle current draw measured at 8 milliamps. While that would still take several weeks to drain the battery, it is more draw than I had expected. I didn't want to add a manual disconnect switch because I didn't want to have to worry about forgetting to turn the charge controller on or off all the time. So I came up with a better solution that I'm really happy with. We are using a 6 pin trailer connector for our solar panels because they are weatherproof, rugged, and very inexpensive but we are only actually using two of the six pins. So we can use two more of those pins as an integrated disconnect switch. Earlier in the video, we already put a jumper wire across two of the pins in the male end of the plug. Now we just need to find the wire inside our solar generator that runs between our fuse block and the solar charge controller. Snip that wire and then place in longer wire extensions to each end of the wire you just cut. We will be routing these extension wires to the female side of our six pin trailer connector. It is also easier to connect the new wires to the pins if you remove the trailer connector from the case. Thread the new wires first through the protective cover and then through the hole in the Pelican case. To neaten up the wires before we trim them so that we can determine the proper length. Then determine the length needed where to trim and strip the ends of those wires. Connect the two wires to the left and right turn signal pins, just like before. It does not matter which of the two wires goes to each of the two pins because the jumper wire on the male side of our plug will be shorting them together whenever we plug in the solar panels. This is what will be turning on our solar controller. This way, whenever we unplug the solar panels, 
the solar charger is automatically disconnected from the battery as well. In the next video, I will be building some portable quick connect battery bank expanders. The design will allow for connecting multiple expander units in a daisy chain using our 350 amp quick disconnect port. I will also show you how to add multiple panels. The current design of our solar generator will allow us to use up to 400 watt panels to be connected at the same time. Make sure to subscribe so that you'll get the update when I have that ready. And please like this video if you found it useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any additional ideas you would like to see as well.